Okay, so I think now my audio is working. My bad. Um, oh, that was bad. <laughs> Hello. So uh, today we just have question Q and A. Just a relaxed. Um, um, yeah. So we just have a relaxed uh, upcoming live stream. Um, and yeah, I was muted. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Please let me know in the chat. I'll be interacting with you guys there. Um, so have a couple of things that we should talk about. Um, and definitely, um, you know, I'm really excited to, to talk about some of these things like new phones coming out, um, and a couple of extra things here and there that are going to be quite, uh, quite helpful. Uh, let me put my dumb phone live stream here. Yeah. Okay. So my audio is working now. Uh, perfect. So yeah, uh, maybe I'm a little bit too loud actually. So let me, uh, go a little bit lower on this, uh, thing right here, just a tad, Perfect. Okay. So, um, yeah. So if you have any questions, anything, make sure to put it in there in the, in the comments. Um, and yeah, we'll be interacting with that. So today we have the tick mini five. So this will be our first showcase. Again, it essentially can do anything. And I've been kind of like testing through different things, but, um, again, just be kind of like always as always you know be mindful of getting phones that are from china it takes a long time i may not work everything perfectly uh but it's been working pretty well for um the past couple of weeks that i've been testing and battery has actually gotten better i got an update on it uh so this phone is not going to come in white actually it's going to come in black only so um yeah so that's that you know and uh of course, um, new mic here with the Shure MV7. Hopefully, it sounds pretty decent. Uh, but it does have pretty much all of the functionality, and I'm really excited to continue testing. Um, let me showcase to you something that I thought was quite interesting. So let me um, maybe get a hotspot. I'll be right back. Maybe my, I'll be right back in just a second. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so live scene, perfect. Um, some of you are asking, how does this stack with the M uh, F21, F22? I have my drawer here. Um, let me see some of the things that you guys usually ask. Uh, let me get this one too. You know, you guys uh, are always asking questions about those, so. Uh, where's the F22? Uh-huh, there it is. F22. Yes. And this should be right here. Boom, right there. Oh, and of course the Hisense. Yes, I do have an update on this. Um, okay, cool, 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 perfect. All right, so let's put everything away for now. Focus on the M5. So M5 and uh, the um, F21. Um, let me see if I can find a charger so we can get. Nope. There you go. All right, perfect. So. Um, yeah, a lot of life updates for me too. <laughs> I've been switching jobs and I'm bringing back the office uh, here. So that'll be charging in just a second. We'll get to see it. Um, so somebody asked battery life on the M5. I would say two days for sure now with the latest update. Um, the M5 has good compatibility. It's not perfect, but again, you know, two two days solid. So, um, besides that, let me see. There it is. Besides that, uh, I think, um, uh,
My bad. Okay. Sorry, guys. Yeah, this this uh, microphone is uh, very sensitive. Um, sorry. Okay. So let's start again that section. So F21 versus M5 at uh, about uh, how long are we doing here? How are we doing? This is uh, seven minutes in. Okay. So hopefully, you know, we're back. Sorry. This, this mic is new and I'm still getting used to it and that's kind of stuff. So seven minutes in, we're going to do this um, M5 versus F21. Perfect. Okay. So again, the F21, M5, they're pretty much uh, very similar. This is max brightness on this one, and this one has max brightness as well. As you see, the brightness profiles are a little bit different. The screen is a little bit different, a little bit cheaper, um, but still very readable, still fine. You know, like, um, again, you, you're you gonna have, um, you know, very good performance on both. Uh, they're both snappy, but the F21, has a faster processor and more RAM and more storage. So again, it's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to just be a better experience. It's a better screen, it's brighter. Both of these are a full brightness and you can definitely see that this one is like pushing way more. Um, so that's part of it. That's like um, something to, to take into consideration. And, uh, but they are both going to run the apps very well. As you see right here, I'm going to go into organic maps. Um, and it's going to probably pinpoint my location pretty quickly. And uh, this one as well, this one does decent, but they're not going to be perfect replacements for smartphones, right? So they're not going to be, uh, the best in terms of that. So it's going to be a little bit more, uh, you know, complex. Um, but Again, they're both great devices. They're both uh, good in terms of uh, kind of like pinpointing your location, getting around, uh, you know, searching for stuff. Uh, this one, this is my only caveat with this phone is the navigation is kind of like, I always end up pressing the the um, end call button thinking that's gonna bring me back because that's uh, usually, you know, it doesn't have a full back button like this one does. So it's kind of like intuitive to a certain degree. But yeah, so again, pretty decent, it has the Play Store, you can install other Google apps like Maps and Auto and you know, all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, again, it's a good phone a, compared to the F21. If you live outside of the United States, get the F21. If you live inside of the United States, get the M5 because of the band compatibility. So it's going to stick a little bit more um, with Verizon and you know things like that so it's going to be just a little bit better now <laughs> here I'm going to bring the monster of course um so as you see right here this is compared with the F22 Pro um the F20 the F22 Pro is um you know kind of like another device that is uh quite larger quite different um and you know completely like a different beast right like it's a completely different uh, device. So that's something to keep in mind, you know, when, when you're, when you're purchasing these devices, what is it that you're uh, prioritizing? Is it form factor? Is it compatibility? You know, things like that. Of course, a bigger screen means possible more distractions, but it just kind of depends on what you're, what you're trying to do. Um, okay, perfect. Uh, we do have some questions on the tick mini, so let's address those. Uh, let's see right here. Um, so Marco says, thanks for the info. I'm getting, um, uh, thinking of getting the M5. The Play Store is done by AliExpress shippers though, right? Like it's not the original software by Tick. Actually, no. Um, on this unit, yes, this one is a kind of like a hacked version, but I've been in contact with the producers of the Tick Mini 5, um, M5 and the Q5, and they are actually going through like a process that they're going to be shipping it themselves. So it's not a, a post, um, kind of like hack, but it's, it's something that is actually going to be done from the original software. So I'm gonna show you right now what happens when you restart maybe or turn it off, like, let's see. So you're going to see right there, it says orange state, which means that somebody kind of like messed with the software, you know, things of that nature uh, in order to make it functional um, right there. So uh, I don't know if you can read that. Let me see, uh, nope. My camera doesn't, it's, 
probably going to be unable to do that. But if you can read that, it says your Android device has been unlocked and that means that the bootloader is unlocked and that it cannot use or that it has been modified, right? So, but essentially what they're trying to do it's to load everything from the beginning. So they have been working on this uh, for a little while. So, you know, they are going to be shipping these devices from what they told me. And of course you have to verify it once you get your device is that you're not going to be seeing those um, kind of like, uh, what's it called? Like you're not going to be seeing those uh, messages, right? That says, hey, your Android device has been compromised, yada, yada, yada. Um, so it's a little bit more trustworthy in that sense because they are actually trying to do it do, do it the right way right like you know i mean there are there are things that um you know you cannot expect or like it's kind of like you don't know what's going to happen especially with a device coming from a different country and that doesn't have all of the certifications yet but yeah you know it's it's something that is that is quite important um yeah so again if you have any questions make sure to put them in the i'm just a little afraid that this is muted so i'm just checking every so often but um yeah check in there and kind of have uh, a little bit of um you know kind of like uh, understanding that hey you know this is a good device this is something that uh, it's going to be happening. Um, I do have a video coming up on the Hisense. Uh, let's switch into the Hisense. So I'll give you guys an update here and you can watch the video later. Um, I may not even release it after since I'm going to be giving you the update uh, here. But, eh, you know, we'll see. Uh, so at 13 minutes, we go to the Hisense A9 update. And I think that I have enough battery. I don't know if it did. It does. Well, 4%. That's not enough battery. Let's uh, connect this. Okay. Cool. So uh, Hisense A9, excellent device, um, has been my daily driver for work in the past few weeks. I actually just switched uh, locations, so I'm going to be working in something completely different and I don't have, I don't need as much access um, to the, I don't need, I don't need as much access to the internet anymore, which is quite uh, something interesting, you know, when you switch jobs and it's pretty much a sim similar job, but I'm, a, I'm at a different location that they're not like needing me to be as tech savvy and I'm, I'm changing my roles and stuff like that. And now I don't need a smartphone. So it's quite interesting. I just switched this weekend actually from the Hisense A9 to the um, Sunbeam F1 Pro. So we'll talk about that um, too. And I, yeah, I've enjoyed my time. And it's kind of like when you switch your job to a low tech job, you know, you have less, less needs in, in that specific department. Uh, let me turn off a little bit of the uh, brightness so that it can charge a little bit because it's e-ink. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal because we have a lot of light right now reflecting in here. Um, so I customized it with a Niagara launcher. It's a very nice launcher that kind of like lists everything by priority first and then by alphabetical order. And I personally think this is genius. It's amazing. And I love the device. I loved using the Hisense A9 for about two months. It reduced my usage so much because of the e-ink screen. It's super boring, uh, but you still have access to a lot of like the niceties. So for example, I have my transit app. Um, what, you know, I needed a lot of transit <laughs> things when I was in my uh, previous location. Now I'm going to be driving a lot, so I'm not going to need that. Um, I did have my Libby app uh, for reading and like, you know, doing a couple of, of those extra things. Uh, here's kind of like a sample. Oh, that's an audio book that I'm listening to. Uh, there it is. So uh, try anyway. So hopefully that works. So this is kind of like the e-reader functionality. Uh, if you see right here. Um, personally, I really think it's very, very good. Um, and you know, it's kind of like any Kindle or, you know, any other e-ink device that you kind of just need to read something very simply, boom, right there, you know, right there you have it and you can read, you can listen to things. Um, it does have, uh, I believe it does have, um, kind of like the connectivity here with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And of course it has USB-C which you can use and of course this is running full android right like you know and having a lot of the functionality um and uh yeah you know uh, right there you have fantasy <laughs> i do keep with that uh chess if you want to play chess so uh, this does exhibit some ghosting uh, when you're playing chess because of how the pieces work um so uh, there it is so as you see right here i'm definitely going to lose this game clearly because i didn't 
I didn't think about it. Um, but there's some ghosting, some, you know, artifacts here and there. And yeah, I mean, you know, it kind of like, uh, it's not so bad. Like I, I think you can see it right here. There's ghosting right there, but it's not bad. Um, uh, when you're, you know, doing very simple animation things, if you're trying to watch a video, it's definitely not going to be a pleasant experience and I definitely don't recommend it. So that's why I personally recommend this device for people that want to get into digital minimalism because it's a great device that kind of just allows you to truly change um, your habits and the things that you check because it's not as pleasant. It doesn't have any color, you know, and you can still have a lot of the apps that you need. Um, at first, Uber didn't work, but then it worked. Um, I sometimes use Uber to transport myself. Um, try not to because I like public transport better. But, you know, you kind of have like there, like the ability to do some of these things. Antenna pod works flawlessly. No issues. You know, you can listen to your podcast. Um and maps, yeah, maps also works flawlessly, no issues. So as an update, I will say after two months of using the Hisense A9, if I had to keep a um, smartphone for work, this will be definitely the way because it works pretty good. Uh, if you're international, it probably works even better for your compatibility. But the thing that I enjoyed the most and that kind of like kind of won me over is just the e-ink screen. Uh, E-Ink is boring, it's a boring screen, and you don't have a lot um, to kind of like go over in, in that segment. So, you know, it's it's kind of like just there for you to utilize, uh, but after a little bit, you're not going to be uh, super attracted to it. So definitely uh, give it a try if you have the disposable income and if you like need to keep a lot of smart features, I definitely think the Hisense A9 is a good um a good way. I'm going to bring my um, light phone and my uh, Sunbeam F1 Pro to showcase to you what I'm doing now for my setup. I'll be right back. Right, all right, all right. So I'm back. Sorry, um, that was my wife actually calling, so I kind of came at a good time because I couldn't find my phone. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll send them, send her a text that uh, I'm in the middle of a live stream. So you know, we'll finish in about an hour, and I can get back to her. I'll call, and I can showcase this to you guys because you want to see the T9 engine. Call you back boom perfect okay cool all right so um now let's get to some my phone pro and light phone 2 this is my 2024 carry so far um and i'm really really excited about it if you have any questions about these let me know so i can showcase uh, whatever um Big pros for the Sunbeam F1. So this is my work phone right now. Big, big pros is uh, Waze. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like night and day compared to a navigation tool. So when it comes to Waze, you have all of the information, essentially um, all of the things that you need, 
um, with knowing your location, knowing where to go, uh, going to like the, I went to a Starbucks the other day and, you know, I kind of like just, uh, it takes a little bit while to pinpoint your specific location, but after that it's smooth sailing. It gives you directions. It talks to you, you know, it does everything that uh, you're expecting ways to do. Um, the navigation, it's a little bit more wonky with the keys. So you definitely need to use the touchscreen, but luckily the Sunbeam has a touchscreen. The other map application uh, right here, this navigation one is better when it comes to the, just using the keys. So this one, you can use the keys without any issues and, you know, find nearby, enter address coordinates. Like they made this for specifically for um, this device and it's kind of like optimized for the, the, the buttons, right? So instead of using um, some of the uh, some of the other things, uh, you you have to use the buttons. Uh, let me update the timestamps here. At 23 minutes, we talk about 20, uh, 2024 setup for myself. And I'll talk about a couple of things that I am interested in getting soon here in our, um, you know, for testing and that kind of stuff. Um, so Sunbeam F1 Pro, excellent device, better reliability. And recently I found this out. Um, for those of you who may type in different languages, like myself, I sometimes text in Spanish and English. You have the keyboard right there and you can put your um, voice to text settings and you can put the speech to, speech to text language. And then you also have a secondary speech to text language. And I personally think that this is a great feature. It's a very, very helpful one, but um, it's not super optimized and it's not perfect. So it's going to pick up the speech to text language, the first one that you put in there, no issues whatsoever. But the secondary one, you really have to enunciate and go over it slowly. I've been texting a little bit more in Spanish, so I did speech to text language in Spanish here, and I tested the English one. The reverse is completely bonkers. Like when you put the English one and you try to speak Spanish to it, it just like butcher, uh, butchers everything. Um, and like it's horrible. But if you flip it, then it's a little bit better, right? Um, you also have the QWERTY settings and you can add QWERTY, you know, how, how it looks, things like that. You also have the input languages. Um, and here you have a lot more input languages to choose from, you know, English, like uh, Spanish, yada, yada, yada. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I personally think it's, it's great. Um, and I personally like that it does accommodate for more. Uh, they're updating the software a little bit more too. Um, I did a couple of updates the other day. I don't think there are any extra updates for this week and um, yeah, no updates available as of now, but they're continuing to update and the firmware and the software. Uh, this is my current version, no updates available. So I'm pretty much um, doing well in, in that department, you know, everything is updated. Uh, the tools, very simple, very nice, you know, not uh, nothing crazy. So again, a good device, uh, especially for work, it has been uh, great. Uh, the Light Phone 2 had a um, upgrade and a very good improvement. Uh, here, let me showcase to you the new keyboard. So, boom, right there. So they did an update over last week and they had a uh, keyboard update and it's a little bit more responsive. So let me see right there, it looks a little bit better. brown box and it has it has less um ghosting so it flashes less when you're composing something it's better spaced out and of course you still have the ability to you know talk to it and uh, kind of have some of this whatever you know voice to text ability only in one language so far um, which I will give the edge to the, you know, Sunbeam F1 Pro because it has multiple languages or a little bit uh, more. It's not all the languages, but it does have French, German, I believe um, it does have Spanish. Uh, let me check. And uh, I personally enjoy that, right? Like, you know, when, when something has voice to text settings and you can, so it has Arabic, Chinese, 
Mandarin, French, German, Hebrew, Italian, Polish, Russian, Spanish, and that's about it. So uh, definitely more than English. So that's uh, very helpful and very nice uh, that they did that. Uh, the light phone has had, uh, you know, again, a couple of updates here and there. Um, this is uh, the special edition light phone. If you saw that one, I was able to grab one. Uh, and they're reworking how the podcasts work and, you know, it has had a lot of like, you know, better improvement, little quality of life improvements. Uh, so you see, uh, uh, right here, um, again, if you have any questions, put them in the, you know, comments below, and then I'll be able to interact with you guys, uh, and answer your questions. Um, let's go over some devices that I am excited about in 2024. So at 27 minutes. 27 devices uh, or new devices, new upcoming dumb phones. Yay. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go over that live streams right here. Let me copy this and put it in all the socials. Uh, my goal is to do a one of these live streams a month for about an hour and a half to two. Uh, today is a perfect day because it's snowing outside and I cannot do anything else. Uh, I cannot even go to the locations that I've been working in. Um, most of my work is in person, so, <laughs> you know, can't do much about it. But uh, yeah, let's see. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, once a, once a month is my goal. So let's uh, go over now. Uh, let's see, video capture device. Yes, perfect. And then let's try screen capture. There it is. Okay. And now I need to do this one and open it up so you guys can see it. Uh, I don't see the option. Let me double click. Ah, there it is. Okay, perfect. There it is. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. Um, Okay, so a couple of things that have come out that I'm really excited about, and then I'm going to go over something that I think can help you guys if you have an iPhone. Um, so I did write a post on my Substack about how to tame your smartphone in 2024. Uh, some of you may have seen that. Um, and if you haven't, you know, make sure to go check it out, Taming Your Smartphone 2024, Moving Offline uh, Substack Newsletter. Uh, and I talked about Apple Configurator there, ADB App Control, Ethernet only, which is something that I'm doing personally. Um, delaying interaction apps, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so you can go over in there. But uh, to, first, I want to show you a couple of things that I thought that they were cool. Uh, first is the Rabbit R1. Uh, you may have seen it last week. Um, and it's, I think it's going to be a good companion device for people who have dumb phones. So if I'm only on kind of like, uh, if I'm on my phone, phone, you know, or like going out and I need like a ticket or Spotify or Uber, I think that this is probably going to be very helpful. I hope it's going to be very helpful, right? Um, but I'm not entirely, entirely sure. Um, Rabbit.tech, I think it's the website. I want to showcase you the, the actual website instead of like all of this uh, thing. Okay, let's go to the actual website. I think, yeah, there it is, rabbit.tech. Okay, so this is the Rabbit R1. Uh, this device is coming out sometime this year, I believe. I did not get into like the first uh, batch, uh, you know, which is going to come out now in, I think, February, March, which I think is a little bit of ambitious, but I don't really think it's going to be uh, that uh, personally. But this device is essentially something that can call an Uber or that can showcase your tickets for Ticketmaster or that can have uh, essentially, you know, some of this training, you can train it to know like different things and kind of like retrieve information from the internet. And it does have USB-C and a SIM card slot. So technically you could pair it up with US mobile. You buy a plan, like a low data plan, uh, they have different ones. This is their unlimited stuff, but like you can buy like a, a low data plan, maybe like, you know, two gigs for 10 bucks or 18 gigs for six, six, six uh, gigs for 18 bucks. Uh, you can even have the super cheap one, one gig of data for $6 a month. 
Um, or you can kind of like get other data plans. Like I think another one, another good one will be Tello. You know, you go to Tello and you're like, hey, you know, I want to make my own plan. Uh, this Rabbit R1 is not going to need any minutes. So, hey, no minutes. I just need um, data. So, hey, 10, 10 gigs of data, 15 bucks a month. I mean, maybe five is enough or two, honestly. Uh, even one, I would probably get two because of six, you know, double. Um, personally, I think it's not a bad deal because um, with this device, you're going to be using uh, essentially, here, let me see if it's here. Uh, they, it has the large action model, which is just a thing to say that AI is kind of functioning in this. Um, but you can do these things, music, map research, shopping, generative AI, or like ask a question or you know, get a response or something like that. Reservations, ride share, food, tickets, and travel. So a lot of us sometimes have to go into situations that um, a lot of us have to go into situations sometimes that, hey, um, I need a ticket for my plane, right? Yes, you can print out the counter. Very good. I actually print out the counter uh, every time that I go into the airport. I get my you know ticket and I go next, right? Perfect. But some people want the convenience. And I mean, for $200, no subscription. That's literally the reason why I bought this because I hate subscription devices. Uh, there is another one. Um, the humane pin, humane pin, um, which, okay. Why do not just give me, oh, there it is humane. There it is. So this one is way more expensive. Uh, it doesn't have a screen. It's kind of like a hologram. Like it just kind of like you can talk to it and it'll reply to you, but, um, essentially it will display some of these things. Um, and there you go, like, you know, kind of like a laser, you can look at the song or whatever. So you're not going to be distracted. But this one is better, in my opinion, because number one, um, it's cheaper. So this one's $6.99 at the base level, $7.99 for the matte black or the high gloss. And then you have to pay uh, subscriptions. So you have to pay $24 a month to use your AI pin You'll need a monthly subscription, which includes the AI bus, um, the unlimited wireless service plan, and cloud storage, right? So you're paying them $24 on top of that. So that's like a prepaid plan at the very least. And I mean, as we saw, there are cheaper plans than this uh, for probably similar benefits because this is not going to use a lot of data, right? Like, you know, it's just very little data, you know, getting packets or like, you know, interacting with the, with the model. But this one has a screen, right? So having a screen allows you to essentially display some of these things, right? Like the, the ride share or the music or the tickets, right? Like, let's just go to a venue. When I go to a venue for Ticketmaster, by the way, you don't need to have a smartphone. You can just showcase your email confirmation or your, your email that you, your ID, and they'll let you in, right? So, you know, it's not super uh, intuitive for a lot of people, but you just need to go to ticket resolutions and then they'll figure a way to let you in. But essentially, I think this is a good... Um, very, it's expensive. I mean, it's not for what it is, right? So, I mean, we're talking like this is a dumb phone, four dumb phones, depending on the which ones you get, right? But what it has is it has, it has a little camera. You can take pictures with that. Of course, it's not going to be like the best pictures in the world, but I assume it's going to be sufficient. Uh, it does have the ability to, um, let me mute this, but uh, here in the keynote, they kind of showcase like, um, Okay, this is all of your screens, all of the stuff that you're doing. So this Rabbit R1 essentially gives you like, okay, hey, you have a question about Ch Killian Murphy or Cillian Murphy, right? Irish actor. Okay, here is some of the ideas that you need. Uh, let me see. Uh, so let's say that you need to play something. There you go. That's kind of like music that it's playing for you. Um, and... Uh, this one was a little bit far, far fetched. It said to plan a full trip, which I don't think it's definitely going to be possible, but like you can train it with information from your home or retrieving information that is uh, important to you throughout the day. Um, and yeah, again, like it, it does have, I think a lot of functionality, uh, it has a web portal without having a web browser. Um, and for $199, I think it solves a lot of those like one time 
apps or things that you need to talk or do you need to do? And if you're somebody that, hey, you know, I really want a um, experience that is more mind mindful with a dumb phone, but I still need access to these little things here and there. I mean, again, I think this is this is better and this is definitely, definitely affordable for what it, it can do. And if it as actually delivers, I think it's going to be a home run for the dumb phone community because all of those like I need this device for this or that. Oh, no problem. Here it is. You train it, you give it whatever you need, and then, you know, they'll continue to expand on some of these things. Whereas like this, the AI pin is like $6.99 and then $24 a month. And it's kind of just like, why? I mean, you know, I've been thinking about getting one for testing purposes, but I just really don't see myself spending $700 um, for something that, uh, you know, can only interact via voice and it cannot display any information. So that's just my personal um, opinion, right? And that's why I got the other one instead of the Humane A pin pricing and no subscription. I, I think that just sells me every single time. When they say no subscription, I'm like, yes, please uh, give me that. So you pre-order, you can get it, you know, it's like a, a $199 and, you know, you kind of go through like a Shopify or whatever, you know, that they have. Um, so check it out. That's a, a device that's coming out that I'm really excited about. Um, another device that is coming out that I'm really excited about uh, is uh, from our friends, uh, I believe. I don't think it's going to be announced, but, you know, we'll, 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 we'll have a live stream with Joe so that he can update us on the Lightphone 3. Uh, so this is Lightphone 2, and I've been using it for the past four years. I believe the Lightphone 3 is probably around the corner. We've talked about it with Joe, and he'll probably give a little bit more uh, data into, like, what they're planning and some of that because it's probably going to take maybe probably another year or two to release. And, um, yeah, I'm kind of, like, excited about that. So Tick Mini, um, Tick Mini M5. Um, so right here, uh, you probably saw my review a couple of days ago. Uh, they're selling it on different websites. One of them is US uh, eBay has one listing, I believe. Mini M5. Boom, right there. $300. Um, there's a, already a used one, I think. Um, brand new 300. 180 for the Q5, which they still haven't fixed the connector, so don't get that one. They still need to fix that. Um, so that's another device that's coming out. I have been told by a reliable source that Nokia is finally going to be releasing their 110 4G. Um, Nokia Mobile. Um, there it is, phones. You just need to, yep, so feature phones. Uh, they're going to be releasing another kind of like companion to the Nokia 225 um, and maybe I can showcase to you which one it is um, if I get uh, not uh, how can I change the store ah there it is United States let's change it to the UK because it's right now released in the UK so feature phones uh, it's going to be one of these the 110 4G 2023 um, I don't see it in their store here either, so that's kind of interesting. So they're going to be releasing the one, uh, 105 and 110 hopefully soon. I believe I saw it on Verizon, some FCC kind of communication. So that's another device that's quite interesting um, that's going to you know be coming out. I'm really excited about that um, just because they have made some tweaks uh, that I think hopefully will help. And one of them is group text messaging, as far as I've been told, but of course I had to confirm once I get the device and I buy it, you know, and I go over that. Um, one last device uh, that is coming out, supposedly, um, I don't know if it's going to actually be <clears throat> um, a reality. And this is where I kind of want to talk about uh, some of these things. So it's called Minimal um nice website you know very well designed uh, but it's technically you know it's supposed to have a tactile keyboard a qwerty keyboard and an e-ink screen um and of course it's you know i i mean i think i think it's a little bit of a dream but um they're trying to make it make it possible so um you can check out 
some other project in here. It's going to run Android, so it's not going to be a complete dumb phone, but of course, e-ink screen, like I talked about in the Hisense A9, it's going to have uh, the ability to you know display some things and it's lower and it's better, so e-ink, good to go. And then um, the keyboard, of course, is a very big attraction uh, to a lot of people. Also e-ink display and battery, you know, stuff like that. I don't know if this is going to be a reality, but I've been told that they're trying to make it a reality and uh, probably they're saying July to August, but knowing how Kickstarter campaigns go and like kind of like fundraising and all of that, I definitely see it maybe end of the year. And if not, beginning of next year. So don't hold your breath for this one. Like, be like, oh, wow, they're going to be producing it right away. Because QWERTY, QWERTY keyboards are hard, man. Like, I mean, this is just hard to produce. It's very difficult. Um, yeah. So that's just something that uh, you should be aware of. Um, those are all of the devices that I can think of um, that are kind of relevant coming up in 2024. And um, yeah, of course, they're going to be helpful. Some of them and others are we're kind of just waiting to see how it all uh, works out. A um, couple of sales happening today. Just uh, you can go to the Dumb Phone Finder to find all these links. But Dumb Wireless, uh, they're having a sale right now on their Lightphone 2. So if you've been looking for a Lightphone 2 and you want, um, I guess they're sold out of the... Um, black one but uh, if you want a white one you can add to cart 280 so 20 bucks less and you can use my code jose5 let's see if it works and get an extra five percent off so there you go i save you 14 bucks 266 dollars now for that um device and you can use it actually on any of their devices. So if you're looking for any of the other devices, they do have a couple sales on the Punk MP02, uh, 2780, their unplugged wireless dumb phone. So if you want an extra 5%, um, you know, go there and check it out. I'm more than glad to uh, hopefully help you in that. Punk, <clears throat> this one is actually interesting. So Punk is having a sale today on the blue MP02, way cheaper than... Um, anything in the market actually um oh, punk.ch <laughs> i forgot uh ch there you go there you go so um i don't know what to think about this i think two things when i see this amount of discount so save 40 percent 239 dollars so if you've been looking for a punk best time to buy the light blue version <clears throat> two things that come to my mind when i see a sell like this Number one, it's a fire sale. They're just trying to get a lot of the inventory out because they're not going to be producing the color anymore. Uh, that's the first thing that comes to my mind, especially with a company like Punk that has been in the market, but they haven't really, you know, gotten over some of their hurdles. And, you know, I mean, they're selling phones, but it's not, you know, the only name in the game. If you want the light gray, it's still $399 and then $379 for the other one. So definitely very very cheap so i think they're probably not going to be producing the light blue just because it's uh it's a completely you know out there color um it's nice it's colorful but maybe not everybody's getting it you know things like that uh so punked the state of punked i think it's very interesting and maybe doubtful to a certain degree like what they're going to be doing with this and then of course they're selling their new smartphone the mc02 for 749 dollars um, please don't get this if you don't need a smartphone and you don't want to kind of like, I mean, honestly, it's kind of crazy that they're selling a phone that you can do yourself for maybe 300, 400 bucks for 749, which is, you know, crazy. But again, that's their new strategy. They're going with the MC02. Um, and hopefully they get to do more dumb phones in the future. So we'll see. Um, also a sell for the MP01, apparently $114. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for a Punk MP02, you have this blue cell, uh, Monday, uh, Pigeon has been better, stabilized, gotten, uh, a lot of good things, but not the best in, in, in my personal opinion, you have daily view, a lot of the features, you know, stuff like that. 
Uh, so that's that. And then uh, let me see what else uh, other discounts that I can think of. Um, get brick. Uh, let's talk about this apps that you can use to tame your smartphone use. So I wrote this post, uh, like I told you guys. So let me update on our <clears throat> let me update on our video details that at 47 47 zero, zero. We're going to go to uh, taming your smartphone in 2024. So I personally Look at the phones plus gadgets. Gadgets plus dumb phones. I'm just updating the for somebody that watches afterwards. Make sure that they're, uh, you know, kind of like going to the topic that they want. Okay, so I wrote this post um, a few days ago, and I want to show you this uh, app first. The uh, brick. Let me go bring it. I'll be right back, and then we'll go back to how this works. Not a lot of questions today from you guys, so just remember if you have a question, <laughs> we go to we we have a Q a, Q and a space and every time, so uh, don't don't be shy <laughs> if you have a specific question. Okay, let me I'll go here. Um, oh, close. There you go, and then screen capture. Perfect. There it is. This is the brick. So the brick is a way for you to control some of your smartphone usage. Uh, so let's say you need a smartphone for whatever reason and you have an iPhone and, you know, like you have a lot of things. Uh, well, perfect. I have access to all my apps, as you see right there. Oh, wow. So many apps. Yeah, that's a lot of apps that kind of just creep up, but you want to use it less. Um, perfect. You open the Brick app right there. You tap Brick. Then you kind of like tap it with the NFC. It's a little bit finicky because the back of my phone is super destroyed. Um, boom. So now you're bricked. So what happens is you cannot use any of the other apps. Whenever you try opening them, it tells you this is a distraction. When you try to open something else uh, that is not authorized, this is a distraction. Don't use it. Go back. Um, that That is a distraction. So... Uh, you set it up, you customize it whichever way you want. And after a while, let's say you want to use your phone, you go back to the brick and then you tap it and then you're good to go. Now you can open Reddit and all of the things at your heart's content. Um, this is an iPhone that I haven't used in a while. So <laughs> um, I just use it for testing different apps or different purposes. So um, yeah, so you have the brick, you set it up. You know, and you kind of have like, okay, you know, chosen apps, the allow list and the deny list. And you can add, you know, different modes when you're at work, when you're at, um, you know, some of some of these things. Um, and that's kind of like, yeah, uh, a very good app. Then you can also use, uh, let me go to screen time, clear space, continue. Okay, so I'll show you another one. And I wrote about all of these in the post. Um, you can see it uh, here. Uh, let me show you. So in the post, you'll find uh, this is Get Brick, and it's uh, decently affordable, forty nine bucks. So personally, I think it's a good uh, price, and there's no more subscriptions. You just buy it, and it's yours. So that's the best products I like. Then you have, um, then you have. Uh, Unplug, which is the tag, similar features to get brick. Then you have clear space and the approach is different with clear space. So let's see, let's try to open Reddit. No, okay, I don't know what happens. Clear space, let's see, okay. So, yep, it's working. Oh, there it is. Okay, finally it, it came up. Okay, so let me show you how this works. So this is one sec slash clear space. Um, they both uh, work the same way. So let's say you try to open that app right there. App opens. So it tells you like, hey, you're not supposed to be using this app. You budget it zero out of zero on your app. So 
just go back to kind of like continue and, you know, or go back because you don't want to um, open this. Uh, for Discord, you gave yourself uh, three opens per day. So, hey, it's kind of like tell, telling you, like, do it. So it's going to send you a notification that you have to tap. And once it, you do that, um, okay, I don't know why this is here. Why this is, okay, never mind. There it is. So never mind. So let's try to do it again. It's supposed to, like, do, like, a little thing. So you tap the notification. Oh, there it is. And it tells you breathe in. So it's kind of like a centering exercise. It just tells you breathe in, wait, breathe out. And then the call to stillness comes quietly. The modern world does not. Ryan Holiday. And it kind of tells you like, hey, you can read instead or you can use the app. So it gives you that kind of like thing that you can choose so it teaches you kind of like it's a habit right so it's like hey i'm going to use this or i'm not so use the app and you tell it for how long we're going to put one minute uh, so now i can open discord without issues and um for a minute and after one minute it's going to lock me out again so i'll have to budget again and you can put it for 10 or you know whichever length it is that you need i really think this is helpful <clears throat> because it allows you to kind of like create and do a lot of things um, with your uh, with your phone, right? And if you put it together with the brick, so it's like, hey, if you want really hard, you know, apps that you cannot use, uh, then you brick them. Uh, but if you want something that is more like, hey, I want to learn how to use this app in a more kind of like uh, habit way or a controlled way, then you have the ability to do so. And it's not going to uh, it's not going to interfere with your, um, you know, kind of usage of your smartphone. So that's kind of like an option. Of course, uh, these are just options that you can have. Um, we're just kind of waiting here for the um, for the app. I think if I open it again, yep, session ended. The time you set aside for this session is up. Okay. And then it tells you, hey, you open it one out of three for the day. So that's one alternative. Um, let's stay in the iPhone world. I'll show you another alternative. Uh, okay, let's go over to our screen capture. Um, so here we have the um, nuclear option for Apple Configurator. So Apple Configurator is an app that you can use to completely um, change everything and how your phone looks and what apps can be installed and what things you need in your phone. Uh, there is a Reddit thread uh, that I linked in this article um, and it kind of goes step by step on how to do it. So you need a Mac and you need um, essentially, you know, uh, you back it up, you install Apple Configurator, you do these things and then uh, you remove the distractions that you don't want, you install the apps that you need and after that, uh, yes, you know, it kind of essentially gives you everything that you need. Now, one thing is uh, this one right here. Uh, there's a person, Aggressive Wrangler, that did a video on this. So here, let me show you the video. Um, and it kind of, she goes, I, I believe it's a she, uh, maybe or the person, you know, whoever it is, uh, kind of goes over um, how to use it. So, you know, back up your phone. It goes over, like, prepare your device set up your device, you know, and like you set it up again, install the apps that you need. Then after that, you go over to disable the apps through the Apple configurator. And, you know, she kind of walks you through everything. I believe that she, uh, <laughs> but again, the person <laughs> goes over it again. Um, I just don't remember, but uh, yeah, essentially, you know, you can put restrictions and take out Safari and, you know, it's essentially you're adding a profile to the phone. And after that, it works. You know, you have the apps that you need. You don't have the apps that you don't. And, yeah, you have WhatsApp. You can have, you know, all of your settings. But no Safari, no distractions, no anything. As you see, this person kept a lot of apps. But, you know, um, you can keep even less apps if you don't need them. And then you can customize it again with Apple Configurator. Um, you know, something like uh, something like that. So, uh, another good option, another good uh, thing uh, that uh, you can use in order to, you know, check out uh, some of the some of the resources 
for your kind of like taming the smartphone, right? Like, you know, using that. Um, I'll showcase now how to do that on um, an Android phone. And I'm actually going to tag this. Uh, let's see. Using ADB app control. This is something that I recommend you using for any dumb phone, any um, Android dumb phone and any Android that you have. Personally, I think this is uh, very helpful. Um, okay, so at 57 minutes seven minutes how to use adb app control many of you have asked me to make a guide so i'm making a guide right now perfect um okay so first you need an android phone second you need to go to settings so you go to settings and you go all the way down to about phone then you go to um where is it build build you need to find the build okay hmm i wonder where this is you need to enable system and updates maybe developer options there it is okay so you need to enable developer options by going to the build settings um usually it is on about about phone and then it will give you kind of like an option of, oh, there it is. Okay, so that kernel, this is specific one says kernel version, but sometimes it says build number. You tap it seven times and it will give you the access to be a developer. After that, you need to go to developer options. And then you go to here to USB debugging. So that needs to be enabled. That's the first kind of like requirement to, to use it. Then you need to download this app called ADB App Control. And I'll showcase it to you how it looks. ADB App Control, there it is. You download it, you can pay for it to support the developer if you want to, it's a one-time payment. Um, as you may have heard, I don't like um, more than one-time payments personally. So I'll showcase how it works now. Um, so yes. Okay. So now that ADB app control has been invoked into my computer, you have, Hey, this computer needs access. So you say always allow from this computer and boom. Now the ADB app control app has, um, the ability to see what's on my phone. So let me put this on the screen capture. Um, and, uh, ADB app control. Yep. Perfect. So let me showcase it. Oh no, not that one. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, screen capture. Okay. I don't know why, but it's not. Aha, there it is. Perfect. Okay, so there it is. So now you can see everything that is on my phone. This is the ADB app control app. Um, this is version 1.8.3. And again, essentially you have the ability to see right there, hey, this is what's on the phone. And if you wanna uninstall it, you can just do this. So let's say um, I don't want the fantasy app anymore. I installed it, but I don't want it. Boom, right there. I say disable or uninstall. I uninstall it and it will do so, no problems. Uh, you can do this pretty much with everything on the phone. Uh, let me find something that I want to get rid of. Um, let's see. Google Play Services. You can get rid of that. Global Search. There you go. That's fine. I'll reinstall it later. So uninstall. And it was, uh, removing or disabling system applications may result in failure of the device. Are you sure you want to do this? Okay. Yes, this is a system application, but it's not necessary. But I'll do another one so you don't get to see that. Um, let's do... Um, I'm trying to think this one, Pomodoro. Okay. Who cares about Pomodoro? Yes. I want to disable it, but I want to back up the file just in case something breaks and boom, Pomodoro is now out of my phone. Uh, let me uninstall the fantasy app so you can see that it's not going to be on my phone anymore. <clears throat> so we're going to see it here for a second. Uninstall. Boom. Yes. Yes. Let's back it up. It's out. And now, let me show my phone. It disappeared. It used to be at the bottom, but it's not there anymore because, well, you know, I uninstalled it. 
You can do this with pretty much every app that you want. And because you can do that, um, you have the ability to, again, just get rid of all of the stuff, all of the distractions, and only leave the phone with what you want. And you can even uh, get rid of uh, a browser. So I think I do have a browser in this. Let me see. Firefox, I think. There it is. Hey, I don't want Firefox anymore. Let me see. Let me put it right here so you can see when it does it. And then um, let me change the screen. So you see Firefox right there. I'm going to press yes. I'm going to press backup. And it's going to uninstall it. And once it uninstalls it, uh, boom, it disappeared like magic. There you go. So you can do this with any app on the phone and you can just leave it bare bones and then you have a dumb phone. And if it's a Hisense A9, it's going to be even more boring because again, um, you have the ability to uh, do some of these things uh, in, in a certain sense, right? Like, you know, you, you have the ability to remove everything you want and only leave uh, the things that you need. Um, okay, cool. Any extra questions, please let me know. Um, let me get... All right, where are you? Yes, Jelly 2 updates uh, and giveaway updates. I need to do a little bit of a giveaway here. There you go. Okay, so let's charge the Jelly 2 for now. And I can showcase to you some other things. Let's go over some questions. All right, time for Q&A. Let me put that 103, 0, 0, 1, no, 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, Q&A. Or first Q&A. I see a couple of questions coming in, so let's uh, go over that. So let's see. Um, Okay, so is there a, oh, we do have 25%, perfect, good. Having used it in a while, so. Is there a news on Cat releasing another dumb phone? Uh, not at the moment. I did hear a um, rumor, if you will, that Cat was interested in releasing another dumb phone, a better quality one than the Cat S22 Flip, but nothing concrete right now my contacts at cat um haven't said anything so i'm just waiting they did say that they were exploring it so but no release date no anything coming in 2024 as far as i know um and maybe there will be yeah um okay so what would i need to do to be able to use the f22 pro in us and canada um Honestly, there is no reliable way right now to use it in both countries. Right now, it's only going to be able to use on uh, Canadian soil because they have more bands that match with the F-22. And in the United States, you can use it with T-Mobile, but only in certain areas. So you can technically use it on Canada, uh, in Canada and in the United States. However, you may not be able to use it... Um, as easily or you may get drop calls in the US and just better performance in Canada. So that's just something that you need to um, kind of like test. There's nothing else that I can tell you to, to be like, oh yeah, it's gonna work with this carrier, that carrier knows. Yeah, it probably work with TELUS and T-Mobile or like Bell and T-Mobile, but um, the T-Mobile performance is definitely going to be subpar. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, next one, uh, Samuel. Uh, did you mention when in 2024 the Nokia might be released? Yes, uh, good question. Uh, so I've been told, hopefully, I mean, I was told that it was going to be released in Christmas season, but I think they just went through a certification and it took a little bit longer. But the new Nokias hopefully are going to be coming out by Mobile World Congress in February. So that's what I've been told. And if it changes, of course, I'll update the community. As always, I try to keep everybody informed. Uh, so that's uh, you know just something that you kind of can keep and kind of think about um oh there you go i thought of something uh, that i can showcase to you I'll, I'll showcase it especially because of this question um so the bosch or daybash so 
this is the Tech M5. So his question is in regards to, hey, what's the best phone that can type in uh, Arabic, right? So, hey, I have, a, you know, uh, he, he, he has a phone and he, he's, you know, he speaks Arabic. He wants to type in Arabic. Normal. Perfect. Um, so it kind of goes two different ways. So the first way is where are you located? I mean, you know, you, you may need to type in Arabic, but you may also need to have other languages. If you are in the Middle Eastern region, I definitely recommend that you get one of the Android devices, of course, like this one. Uh, this is the Tech M5 or the F21. Um, so yeah, that's just something um, to, to consider. But old TT9 is probably going to be your best friend because uh, it does have different languages that you can load. And because this is a open source, um, this is an open source uh, app, you can request uh, different languages to be typed. Uh, as you see right here, there's a lot of them. I do not see, uh, let me see. I do not see Arabic in this one. I do see Hebrew, but let me show you where the project lives so you can go ask them to create or what can you do to make sure that it works with the, with the keypad. So I use old TT9 um, or traditional T9, as some of you may call it, um, to type, and it's an excellent engine. Uh, let me change the keyboard here, the input method. Darn it. There it is. Okay, so as you see right there, that's the input method. And I just changed it to use the keyboard and it has T9. Hello, my name is Jose. And it's pretty responsive, right? And it kind of just works. So let me show you where the project lives so that you can um, that you can uh, uh, take a look into it. Um, okay, let me change this screen capture to this one right here. Perfect. Okay. So if you ever have an Android dumb phone, um, and you want to type with the keyboard, you don't want to use a touch screen. I, so S Spanak or Spanak, um, has created this, uh, TT nine is an IME for Android devices with a hardware keypad, sports predictive typing in multiple languages and comfortable hotkeys. So bringing old school Nokia experience to modern Android devices. So um, here are some bugs, how you can contribute to the project. There it is, add a new language. Um, so if you wanna add a new language, uh, find a suitable dictionary and add it to, to the languages dictionaries folder. Do not forget to include the dictionary license in the docs, create a YML. This may sound a lot of technical thing, but it's not that technical. Like, I mean, let, adding a dictionary is not uh, super, uh, super difficult. Uh, so, and if you kind of get stuck in it, you can also use chat GPT for this. Uh, technically they can build you some of these things or you can contact, you know, the people here at, uh, the, uh, you know, the developers and like the issues and like the people, uh, to say like, Hey, you know, I want to, um, I want to add, uh, Arabic. I want to be able to type uh, very easily without using a, um, a, a keyboard uh, on the touch screen. And can you help me or can, can I help? How can I help? Like, you know, I can, I can, I can learn, I can be open to it. Right. Because, um, uh, there it is. Somebody already has Arabic language pull requests. So I create a YNL CSV dictionary and text words string life files for Arabic. Please test and let me know if this will be able to be pulled. The language reads right to left thorough testing, maybe need to difference in right versus left and justification. Um, right away, you know, the way that you structure this confuses the validator. They comment. This is very recent, actually. Yeah, it commented last week. Um, synced to fork upstream, which means like, you know, to kind of like get it uh, to, I don't see the public options, dictionary text five days ago. I mean, there's a good discussion happening here. So somebody's already working on this. You can just be like, hey, how can I help even further? So this person says, I converted the dictionary file into pure UTF-8 and now dictionary loads and predictive typing works. So that issue is completely resolved. Um, again, they're working through it. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I love open source projects because they give you kind of like the ability to do all these things. Um, so the bash, there it is. Old TT9, best for Android dumb phones. And if you want to use the, the 
kind of like the touch screen then just load it on the touch screen with any keyboard g board or something like that and you can even have uh, voice to voice to text on that okay more q a um a while ago someone claiming to be working for agm posted on reddit asking for suggestions is that legit yes that what was legit that person was asking from agm i had the ability to verify that and agm talking about agm uh i should have added this on the no 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 no. that's not what it is that's not the website nope yep i knew it um there it is agm phones ah oh, sometimes i forget these um th this one is exciting that is coming out but i'm not necessarily super super excited um <clears throat> on this matter personally uh, so they do have a new um agm m9 4g phone coming out i mean i bought it so it's supposedly coming at some point in time and it's for me to test um <clears throat> but i don't know when so this is a keypad phone um it's the same base as the agm m8 so it's just kind of like super basic, very easy to use. And it's just kind of like a simple phone in a um, candy bar format. It does have uh, group text messaging. So that's uh, something very good. Uh, and you can buy it for $49 for US T-Mobile version or for the rest of the world, uh, which <clears throat> it should work without any issues because it has you know all of these uh, little things here and there. Uh, so that's another one that I forgot to say. It has come out, but it's not shipping yet. So it's kind of like pre-order, I guess you can say it. And it should be coming to home very soon. So you guys can, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get a review going and, you know, some of these things. Um, okay. Uh, right. Let's see. Uh, Milan S uh, says again, is there a reliable site that you can recommend that lists out all of the network banks in Canada, US that F22 Pro will have? in order to and with Canada and the US carriers. Okay, so yes, um, two things that you can do. Uh, first thing um, is go to sellmapper.net because this gives you the exact bands that you're going to be using in the area, right? Um, and as, this, as they say, this is strictly for personal use, not for <clears throat> a commercial use. So you're, you're fine because you're gonna be using it. So go to your cell mapper and then you're going to go to menu, provider, and you select the provider. In this case, we're gonna select T-Mobile because again, um, T-Mobile is the thing that we're gonna be using in the United States. So T-Mobile, United States of America, and we're gonna filter by 4G LTE bands because that's what the F22 Pro has. And as you see right here, it tells me where all the towers are in my area. Now this does not, not surprise me at all because um, I have a Hisense A9 and I already kind of confirmed uh, some of these things and I already know which bands are in my area. But as you see right here, it has two, 12, 66, and 71. Two, 12, 66, 71. Two, 12, 66, two, 12, 66. So if I have two, uh, this one has band 41, uh, which is the only band that the, um, what's it called? The only band that the, uh, um, Hisense A9 has that is super compatible with the uh, with the <clears throat> with the T-Mobile network in my area, so that's why I, I'm able to do it. But essentially, when you go to Cell Mapper here in the United States and you you know go over like, hey, where where are the towers? Number one, and what do they use? And I see you see right here, two sixty six, two forty one, uh, forty one, two sixty six, two twelve. You know, so you go to this and you're like, hey, um, which which um, area do I live in and what, where am I going to be using it? Because at the end of the day, what matters is that you get service where you're going to use the device. Um, now, if you travel a lot, then that may be a little bit more complicated. Uh, but let's go to, um, let's go to zoom out a little bit more. And let's go, as you see, this is how the network is kind of like distributed. Um, but let's go to the Canadian border. So, so yeah, you can see how, you know, some of these things kind of overlap within America. And like, I'm going to assume that you're going to be in Michigan just for simplicity's sake in here. So Michigan, and then you're going to go to uh, the province next door. Um, <clears throat> 
and then we're going to be testing in there like okay well what is it that you know like what is it that is in the areas that i'm going to be using um and aha i found canada winnipeg okay um i feel like that's a little bit i think i went too north right am i am i wrong in this I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. I think this is the Minnesota area. Yes, it is. Yeah, because I was like, oh, it's Winnipeg. That's not what I remember. I used to live in Michigan, so uh, there it is. Perfect. So you want to go to Toronto, right? Okay, well, so here is Michigan, right? So let's say you're going to be going between Detroit and um, kind of like so uh, Toronto and Detroit, right? So you're going to be going here. <clears throat> you get to do whatever you get to do. And you're like, okay, I want to learn more. Right there, you have the ability to see what T-Mobile USA uses in this area. Um, and uh, as you see, it's loading very slowly because it's a lot of mapping data. But <clears throat> we're getting closer. And then what you would do is, okay, there's two 12, 66, 71, 12, 66, 71, 12, 66, 66, 71, 41 a couple times, two 12, 66, 71. Perfect. Okay, so now we did T-Mobile. And then you would go to the provider that you use on the, um, let's see, Canada. Let's say it's Bell. So you're going to be using Bell, right? Perfect. Look at that. Bell tells you, except, I'm sorry, exactly the same thing. They're mapping out where are the towers and what do they use? 2, 4, 5, 12, 13, 17. 2, 4, 5, 7, 13, yada, yada, yada. And as you see right there, I mean, this is not just a list of American stuff. This is like a list of, again, pretty much every carrier in the world, you know, will have some sort of like, you know, mapping data with people that have contributed to know which bands are used. So then you would go and do what? You would go and be like, okay, I'm going to search for Google F22 Pro bands, right? So... The, so this is one uh, website, uh, kind of, I mean, I, it, it may be questionable, I guess, you know, uh, um, whether it has all the bands, but at least it's listing something right here. So, okay, it has B1, 3, B5, 7, 8, uh, 38, 39, 40, and 41. Okay, I have tested this, and I know it has 41 because I have tested the phone. So um, you can do 41. Here in the United States, and I live in a 41 area, so hey, it works, right? That's why I'm always saying to people, hey, always check where is it that you're doing these things because it matters. So, and this is actually a decent representation of the band. I don't think this is comprehensive, but I think it's a good list. Um, let's go to this one right here. Um, let's see. This doesn't say anything. Test, opinions, questions. Uh uh. So you kind of go searching for these things. I don't think everything is listed on the AliExpress listing. Um, but, you know, like I'm not, you know, 100% on that. Uh, let me see if I can find something that kind of gives the uh, the phone view more right here. Okay. So battery capacity, SAR, mainland China, certification, none. Let's see. Uh, the B13 and like stuff like that, it wasn't a bad representation. I, I would I would say that that's a pretty decent representation of the bands that it has. And I'm just here kind of like going like the extra mile searching for something else. Um, so here, okay, can't reset. Can't do OTA updates. Aha, here, there you go. Okay, there you go. So here we have a little bit more expansion. Uh, so it does have a 4G bands 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 41, 40, 39, and 38. There you go. So this is kind of like from the for place. So you would you would say like, okay, so I'm going to be in Canada and I'm going to be in the United States. Do the bands overlap? Can I get at least a resemblance of service, right? So like, you know, um, so for example, we're going to go back to cell mapper. Go, go back to our example. And... Um, yeah, this is kind of giving me, giving me, it's it's a little slow, so <laughs> you know, forgive it, I guess. Um, we're in Colorado here, which is nowhere close to Canada, but 
we're just gonna be like okay well so if this one doesn't use if bell doesn't use the bands that i need which one use the uses the bands that i need okay so here we're loading it um okay so here right here we have two four five you know 71 um okay well sadly we need more than that so probably not gonna work so if you're like kind of just in between uh, these two areas is like you're in detroit it's like well uh, i need something that would that has 66 and two but that's with bell so let's change it to something else uh tell us let's say tell us right so tell us has different coverage um oh tell us has uh 13 66 uh, so a little bit more overlap with t-mobile just a little bit more not a ton um and then you can look for bands right there these are the bands that you that tell us uses uh, Rogers. Okay, let's go to Rogers and see what it has for GLTE. Boom. Rogers uses 71, uh, 41. Perfect. So now you can uh, go even a little bit more uh, because we saw that the F22 has 41 as well. But in this area, Rogers doesn't have 41. It's only here in Kitchener and in Brantford and uh, in Bra Bramonton or something like that. Niagara Falls a little bit here and there, right? So this is how you research whether your phone is going to work or not. Otherwise, you're just doing trial and error, which is fine. But as you see, band 41 is extremely limited. Whereas if we switch to T-Mobile in the United States and we say, hey, I want band 41, it may be a little bit better, right? So, yep definitely better so as you see right here it's definitely more populated and in the metro area right here boom you have a ton of coverage so that's how you do it um uh so yeah you know like you have the ability to kind of like get to your um yeah so rogers you know t-mobile at&t yada 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 you test it you go for it and uh then you will see um so some of those things okay all right um let's continue with more questions <laughs> that cell mapper honestly that portion right there that i talked about cell mapper <clears throat> um it it's just very important it doesn't matter where you live you probably will have some data uh, in here and if not, you can contribute to this project. I contribute all the time, actually, because when I'm testing, I have an app on my phone that tells me which bands are on there. And then I try to, you know, make corrections, try to give them data uh, that way because I want uh, this to be, um, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to put the link, cellmapper.net is the, is, the, is the link that you need to use. I'm going to put it in the chat, cellmapper.net. Uh, let me copy the link from the... Uh, Okay. And then you kind of like refine, learn how to use it. Um, and of course, this is just data that it's been given by the people. So you can only trust it so much because, again, it's, it's just what people are doing, you know, kind of a thing. So it's not a 100 percent, but it, it gives you kind of like a great representation of how to how to know, hey, is this dumb phone going to work in my area? OK, I look at the bands. I look at what's in my area. Does it work? No. Yeah, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, Chloe says, review the Geophone. I have tried, and I have tried to procure one from India, but I haven't been able to. So I'm sorry, but I will continue trying and try to get one uh, from over there. Um, Pearl says, hi there. I do travel and looking to downgrade. What will be a good transition phone? Um, it depends on how much you want to, how much friction you want to introduce to your life. If you're just asking from like a compatibility sake, like you want a phone that can work everywhere in the world, uh, the only one that I know of is the Punked MP02. It actually works really decently. That's the that's the major pro from the Punked MP02. It works literally in most places, like because it has a, an amazing. Um, it has an amazing band support. So uh, that would be something. But of course, that's going to bring the reality that it can only do certain things. It can only do calls and texts, one-to-one, -one, and um, signal. And that's about it. And it has a calendar view, which uh, it's okay. You know, it's kind of okay. Uh, but if you're looking for something more like, hey, how can I tame my smartphone um, and reduce my usage, uh, but still re re retain some of functionality, Cat S22 Flip is a good phone. 
Um, I, I like it a lot. So that one can travel. Uh, you, you can use it in Europe and at least in the United States. So if those are the main areas, uh, some people have been able to use it in Latin America. So again, that's a good um, you know, thing. But if you just want to reduce your smartphone use, uh, go to this post that I wrote a couple of days ago, um, literally like three days ago. And um, yeah, you guys can look into it uh, and it will give you a couple options that you can use to reduce your smartphone use. Uh, so that's my answer for you, Pearl. And if you have anything more specific, then you can put it in the comments. Um, okay. Uh, what, um, Tommy asked what map I'm using. I put it in there uh, in, the, in the chat. So there you go. All right, uh, Modi. Uh, so, hi, Jose. In your opinion, what would be the ultimate dumb phone? One you daily drive, or maybe does it already exist? Of course, everyone has personal preferences, but what would yours be? Uh, good question, uh, Modi. Um, so, I, I think the phone that I am going to choose... It, it depends on the kind of friction I want to have in my life, number one, of course, right? So that's kind of like my uh, uh, cop-out answer. But I, I, okay, I've been daily driving the Light Phone 2 for a reason, for so long at this point, that I really think it's, personally, I think it's, it's one of the most ideal devices. Um, because, again, um, it has all the tools you need without a lot of the distractions. So somewhere between the Light Phone 2 and Kai OS, with something like the, this is just an example, but like the Nokia 2780, somewhere between there, I think that's, that is the uh, sweet spot. Something that has enough functionality but not too much to suck you into a world of like distraction. I personally think, this is just my personal opinion, that you definitely need, um, definitely need keys or a small touchscreen like this one. Anything larger or like starts to get larger, um, anything larger than, than, than a 4.5 or five inch screen, it's going to absolutely draw you in into using it. That's just what I believe. That's just my experience uh, with all of these different phones. Anything with keys and like, you know, like even the Jelly 2. This is a good example, actually. This is the, oh, the Jelly Star. This is the star, right? Even the Jelly Star, it has a tiny screen. But you can have all the apps you want on this. You know, like you can do whatever you want on this device. But because of the tiny screen, you're going to be less enticed to use it. So as you see, there's a lot of apps in here. But honestly, you don't use it because you have the functionality, but because it's so small and kind of like, eh, you know, um, yeah, it's kind of like less enticing to use. So I personally think somewhere in here is the sweet spot, a small device that has all the functionality without any of the distractions. Once you start getting into like the whole, um, once you start getting into the whole um, app store, once a, once a device has an app store, I think it's extremely complex and complicated for you to be like, oh, I'm not going to use it. Oh, I'm not going to install this distracting app. I'm, I'm going to be very, um, this is sounding back and forth. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to be very, uh, discipline, right? Like, you know, a lot of people talk about discipline and discipline is extremely important, but it's habits that you have built. Sorry, my chair is getting stuck in something. Um, so yeah, like, so in, in my opinion, that's the difference, right? So like you, you need to find a sweet spot for you that has all of the functions you need without the distractions. And that's hard because in the smartphone world, there's very few things that can do that. You either have to customize it yourself or you have to uh, compromise and be like, well, I won't be able to get everything you need. And that's why, personally, I think that the Rabbit R1, this device right here, is going to be such a game changer for me specifically because I'm like, okay, 
I don't have to miss out on some of these smart features, but because it's not an app store, it's not something that you interact with that you can navigate through, right? You have to tell the, 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 the little device, hey, give me this ticket, get me this Uber, uh, play this song, y yada, 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 right? Then I definitely think that it's going to be a, a different kind of device. So it's a good compliment. But somewhere between, again, to answer the question, long-winded answer, somewhere between this, the Lightphone 2, super basic, no tools, no extra apps, and the KaiOS environment, somewhere between there, I think it, it's it's a very good, good environment to have. So um, I personally like KaiOS, the concept, right? The concept of, of, of KaiOS is perfect because honestly, it has some niceties, some little things, but not too smart that it's going to draw you in and be, you know, super, super, um, uh, you know, doom scrolling and doing all of those things. All right, we're approaching an hour and a half. So again, put your questions. Uh, we're going to be finishing at, at two, at two hours. Um, so, you know, and then I'll continue with my day. You continue with yours and thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. Really appreciate it. Uh, one more personal thing, uh, that has happened since last, uh, so low tech life, uh, now it's on, um, uh, audiobook. So if you have an audible subscription and you want to support and you want to hear my voice, uh, narrate the, uh, the book, you can purchase it on, uh, uh audible right now and soon to come to my uh, website as well. So if you want to even, you know, kind of like better, like <laughs> uh, support me even further, right? Um, uh, you can buy it from, from, my, uh, from my store on the website. And now it's on hardcover, it's on paperback, um, it's on uh, Kindle, and uh, it's on uh, audiobook. So, you know, you can uh, get all of that uh, and I can play uh, something. Let me see if uh, you guys can hear it. Uh, hopefully, I desktop audio. Let me see. Uh, okay. Um, let me see if I can play low tech audiobook. I'll just play the. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll play. Uh, what's chapter eight? I don't remember. YubiKey, VBLCCP. Here it is. I'll play that one. Let's see if you can VBLCCP. As a transfer student settling into dorm life, I was eager to find a job on campus that would not only help me earn some extra cash, but also fit seamlessly into my college schedule. When word reached me that the campus daily was hiring, I leaped at the opportunity. The prospect of crafting sandwiches and salads all day didn't bother me in the least, and I figured it would be an excellent way to forge connections with fellow students on campus. However, there was one glaring issue, the start time. The deli opened its doors at 6 a.m., which required me to be there, apron on, by 4 a.m. to begin prepping the food. As a night owl, accustomed to late-night conversations with friends or marathon study sessions, the idea of waking up at such an ungodly hour filled me with dread. The initial weeks were nothing short of a Herculean struggle. I rolled out of bed each morning, bleary-eyed and irritable, fighting the urge to hit the snooze button. The trek to the deli seemed like an eternal journey, and I frequently found myself nodding off during my shift. Crafting sandwiches and salads wasn't precisely rocket science, but maintaining focus proved challenging when all I yearned for was the warm embrace of my bed. After three long months of battling this grueling routine, I recognized that something had to give. While I enjoyed the job itself, the hours were slowly but surely draining my life force. I made the difficult decision to resign and embarked on a search for a position better suited to my schedule. Fortunately, my quest was short-lived, as I soon landed a gig answering calls and creating graphics for a campus department. The hours were ideal for me, allowing me to indulge in a more reasonable sleep schedule while still providing ample time to work in the afternoons. All right, that's a sample <laughs> from the from the audiobook. Ho hopefully, you enjoyed it. And that part of the book talks about um, designing the lifestyle you want. And uh, 
waking up at 4 a.m. wasn't the lifestyle I wanted. So I had to find another job <laughs> in order to, in order to do that. Um, but, you know, there's more stories and more things. You can also find it on the Substack stack um, if you are a, a supporter. So, you know, thank you very much for all the support. I really appreciate everything uh, that you guys have done. Um, it's literally, you know, I'm just here to provide value and to try to help as much as I can. So, again, any questions, I'm here for it. For it. All right, let's do a second round of questions. Um, <clears throat> And then at one, uh, yeah, I put that as a sample, 136, then uh, 36 of second Q&A, and then we can continue. Okay. So, all right. So a couple extra questions. Do you know the 3G bands that the LP2 uses? I know someone that would love to use it in the US, but it's 4G bands is incompatible bro, with this carrier. Yes. Yeah, so, um... I don't know. I do not know. I do know that the light phone has 1900 and um, 800 for the basic bands. Um, but let me see. I don't remember which if it if it at all has uh, any uh, any bands <clears throat> for for the light phone. Um, not I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Okay. If you give me the country, I can look it up, but this is what it has for England? What? Oh, UK probably. No? United Kingdom. There you go. So it has these for international use. Um it's definitely a small device. It's not gonna have, you know, all of those things. Um and it tells you which one it works with. And you can put essentially any country, you know, some countries don't have any uh you know, kind of testing, so you cannot know. Uh, so you see right there, you know, some, some Singapore works. Well, that's that's interesting. <laughs> I never knew that. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, so Serbia, and you know, they kind of tell you like which which ones, uh, which ones don't. Romania, Puerto Rico, Philippines, Panama. You know, just put your country there and. Uh, you can test. So uh, I don't think, it, yeah, Mexico is not there, but Costa Rica is, right? I believe so. Somebody tested in Costa Rica and then they got the data. I believe, see, there it is. Yep, Colby, works with Colby. Um, yeah, so that's that's something I, I don't know. I, I would ask them if they have any 3G bands in it. I, I do know it has the basic 2G bands for sure. Uh, David says um, he purchased a Qbot for his mother, and uh, it's been running great. Good. The, the Qbot is essentially a, a very cheaper. Uh, it's a cheaper um, jelly uh, device, but it's essentially pretty much the same. Super small, and it works uh, pretty well. Okay. Next question. Um, it says, "How good is an old BlackBerry as a dumb phone? For example, a passport." Um, I don't have a passport anymore. I used to own one. But I believe, well, this one is an Android Blackberry. Oh, I should do some testing. All right, I cannot find it. All right, I cannot find it right now, but I will um, use this as a decoy. So if you have a BlackBerry and you have 3G bands still, I think it works fine. I mean, definitely this isn't a smart operating system, right? But because, um, yeah, if if uh, if I I uh, I think so, something like a BlackBerry device, right? Of course, this is uh, this is the Titan actually. Yes, this is Unihard Titan. It just looked like the the key one to me, um, but <laughs> um, uh, the Unihertz Titan Slim, Slim. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think it will work well. The Passport or the Classic, I have a Classic somewhere here. Actually, I need to do some testing because every year around the first of the year, I try to see like, okay, does this still work? Last year it still works in certain areas, very, very limited. Um, so yeah, um, Chris, uh, 
I don't know where your question was. I'm sorry. I'll try to see it again. Uh, you can put it again if you want to. Um, but yes, so again, uh, um, I think a, a BlackBerry will work fine as a dumb phone. You know, it's if you have the coverage and you can make calls, I think it'll do perfect because uh, it doesn't have all the apps anymore and you can only use very, very things uh, super limited. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Partha, would you recommend the bloating Android with ADB or a basic button phone? Honestly, both. Both are great options. Um, it, it's always about the friction you want to introduce to your life. If you want something that is very limited, then a button phone, of course, is going to make you more limited. But if you want to still have access to a couple of things here and there, then, um, yeah, uh, if, if, if there is a um, kind of like some things that you desire, like Teams, Spotify, things that are useful, you know, then just deep load it and, and use it. I mean, th everybody works differently. I mean, I can show you like <laughs> here. Let's let's go into a little rant, a little rant from Jose coming soon. OK. So, you know, we I go on Reddit every so often to manage the dumb phone, the dumb phone subreddit. Um, and I know many of you have a lot of opinions right now about the current trend that everybody's <laughs> putting their everyday carry. And I do have I do have uh, opinions, too. So don't don't get me wrong. I understand. You know, it's like a lot of pictures and a lot of things. But there was this post a couple of days ago that I was like, OK, guys, like, I mean, people think that everybody works the same. All right, let me see. At 143, I'm going to go on this rant for a little bit. So 143, rant. <laughs> um, everyone's different. Let's, let's start by saying that. And everybody has different needs, okay? I get it. Not everything that shows up on this page, on the dumb phone subreddit, is, um, is a dumb phone. I get that. Absolutely. But here's the reality. Some people can work with a dumbed down smartphone. Some people can do it. Some people cannot. The way that our brains are wired is different and we have to come to accept that. I'm trying to find the post, but there was this guy that said like, hey guys, here's the perfect dumb phone. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Just buy an iPhone 13 mini and like configure it and, and, and like dumb it down and it's going to be fine. But it's like, yes, we know that. We know that some people can make it work, but other people can't, right? Um, but but the reality is that everyone is different, and we have to accept that. Some people can have a a phone on their, on their pocket and not use it because that's how their brain is working, and they're like, yeah, I have enough discipline. I've built enough good habits in order to make that happen. I'm still trying to find the post. Um, and some people can't. I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people that cannot, for real. Like literally, like for me, smartphones got out of hand for me and I was using it day in, day out and I just couldn't, you know, uh, I couldn't do it. Um, and I feel like every so often we have these like different things or different posts. They, they come every so often that, Again, like, yes, I get it that you personally can use a smartphone and be okay. You know what? There was another one um, more recent. Sorry. <laughs> um, and I was just like, uh, there, this one, this, there it is. Okay. So it says, um, maybe smartphones aren't the problem. And I'm like, smartphones are part of the problem. Let, let's, be, let's be frank here. They're part of the problem. They're not the only problem, but they're part of the problem. So this guy says, try to switch to a flip phone. Couldn't figure out how to type with it. Okay. Well, you know, mind you, I grew up with flip phones in high school. So I totally was expecting pressing the two key twice for B, pressing three times for C, etc. Gave me a bunch of weird stuff and I could literally not type anything. I just got upset and went back to my old iPhone. Okay. First of all, you just got upset. And uh, by the way, I am not hammering on you, user Honutoki. Please do not think. I'm just using your post as an example for my rant. Okay. Just let me say that, right? This person got upset and it's like, and went back to a little iPhone. Okay, well, you could have figured it out. You know, like, I mean, that's that's kind of like a problem here. You did not take the time to understand how the phone works, right? So because of that, now you're like, I'm going back to my iPhone. 
Well, of course, it's a convenient thing. The convenient thing is to just go back to your iPhone. It's just easy, right? Like that's just how it works, right? But you need to give it time. You need to give time for you to adapt to the new phone and to kind of use it in that way. So he, he got thinking. Anyways, it got me thinking maybe the problem isn't smartphones per se. I've struggled with what I consider phone addiction for quite a while, but even without a smartphone, it's easy to get addicted to anything else. When you suffer from a mental illness, you can get addicted to video games, uh, watch YouTube endlessly, Reddit, books, yada, yada, yada. All right. The thing about smartphones in particular is that they accelerate certain problems that already exist in society by exponential factors. Exactly what I want to go into, right? There were a lot of good comments on this that says modern technology and content are optimized to capture your attention because companies need your attention to make money. That right there is the truth. Companies have optimized. Companies have optimized content and apps in order to capture our attention because they need our attention to make money. You're being advertised to. You are being, you know, controlled by you. The, algor the algorithmic content is, is giving you what you want in order for you to spend, in order for you to do all of these things. And you have to resist that, right? But there's only a certain level of resistance that you can do. And that is something that a lot of people do not understand. And I don't know why. But like, you know, for example, this one's another one. Behavior is a problem. Yes. But an easy way to correct behavior is by distancing yourself from the distractions. I even thumbed it like, you know, thumbs up. Why? Because I wholeheartedly think that, yes, again, smartphones are not the 100% of the problem, but they are part of the problem. When you have a button phone, right? When you have something like this, it's harder for you to go on the internet. It's harder for you to actually do some of these very difficult things or very easy things, convenient things. Ordering an Uber on this thing is hard if you want to do it through the browser. You can call and you can order an Uber, but it's less convenient than having a nap and, and doing it that way. So we have to stop, in my opinion, we have to stop like saying like, yes, this is the solution for everybody and it's going to work. I showcase to you different solutions because everybody has different needs. And we have to come to understanding that if we're going to actually make an effort and actually go, you know, like, um, uh, if we're actually going to battle some of these problems, because the problem is not that you're spending, you know, 15 minutes on YouTube shorts per day. The problem is that it grows with time because it's so addictive that, it goes to two hours, goes to three hours. And if that's how you want to spend your life, that's fine. But a lot of people are finding like, hey, this is not what I want to spend my life, right? And, and you know, like, if they don't want to spend it like this, they need an alternative. But they're not willing to get all of this mm, friction into their lives again, right? And yeah. So like, yeah, again, it's it's kind of like everyone is different and everybody needs a different solution. You just need to figure it out how much friction you want to enter into your life. I don't want to go into this rant too much because honestly, there's a lot to say and there's a lot of studies and a lot of things I have written and I have showcased. It's just like the studies are there. Like, you know, I mean, this is a very good conversation right here uh, from here. It's like the problem with today's smartphones is they, they're designed intentionally to distract you. And there's like, iPhones are not designed to distract you, but apps are. I'm like, so just avoid installing the apps that will distract you. Sure, that is possible. But have you considered that there is peer pressure as well? That there are certain social norms that people participate in? I mean, think about people that go to any social event that they don't want to go to but they feel obligated to. Why do they go? Because they're a part of society. They're part of traditions. They're part of this human fragility that we all have and we're susceptible and companies are exploiting that. And that's my point. If you want to use a smartphone and you want to dumb it down, there are way, there are many methods on how to do it. And that may reduce your screen time by, by these things. And if you're still addicted to, to, the, to the issue, you're going to go find your way around it. I'll, I'll give you an example of like, uh, um, I work with a lot of uh, young people and, you know, people of different ages, but I work with a lot of young people and a lot of the things that they say uh, to me, is like, Hey, you know, I'm addicted to this thing. I'm addicted to that thing. And sometimes they're internet related. And I tell them like, Hey, you know, what you could do is like, you can set up a DNS 
And with a DNS, you can set up uh, something. It's, it's a little bit of a technical process, you know. And, and, but for Android, like you can hard code it in, w via ADB. And once you do that, you can access some of these websites and stuff like that. And they're like, yeah, but I'm not going to be able to talk to my friends. Yeah, but I'm, you know, the streak that I have on Snapchat. Uh, yeah, but, you know, TikTok and like the information that I get. People talk about all of these benefits but they're unrealized benefits at the end of the day because you end up doing very little with that information. If shorts and TikTok and all of these things were actually giving you good information that's going to make your life better, by all means, watch all the shorts you want. But if all they're doing is entertaining you and not actually giving you actionable information that you're actually going to put into your life to make it better, then is it really that valuable? And that's where I have to come to, right? Like, it's like, you have to come to a realization of what you want in your life and how you want your lifestyle to be. And for me, the lifestyle that I want is something that is simpler and less online. That's why I call the newsletter moving offline because that is what I'm doing. Slowly but surely, I'm moving my way, moving away from all the things that I need, simplifying things and making sure that I do life in a more, um, you know, kind of like, succinct, simple basis that I can just go and walk with my dog. I can cook some breakfast. I can eat it. And I can talk to you guys once a month, right? Like, you know, and, and, and give my thoughts into the world, but I am online way less. And it's crazy because I do have this hobby, right? Like, you know, where I talk about all of these things uh, with you guys online, right? But this doesn't like represents so little of the amount of time that I was spending on my phone in 2019. When I first started this journey in 2019, I was on my phone constantly. My life was being dr like drained away and I started to find different methods. And eventually at one point in time, I'm like, you know, at some point in time, I'm like, Hey, you know what? Doing a live stream for two hours. That's fine. It gives me some community. It allows me to get to some of the questions. It allows me to answer some of these things and help somebody else, um, find the lifestyle that they want, but I'm not doing live streams every day because I don't want to be a streamer per se. Could it bring more money to my life? Like, you know, if people gave me supers and thanks and all of that stuff, sure, it could, but I don't want that life. So I just do what it's best for me. And I feel like people need to understand that. And I hope that you understand that, that you have to do what's best for you. Because if you're not looking out for yourself, trust me, Apple is not, Google is not looking out for your best interest. They're looking out for their best interest and their best interest is achieved when they're able to capture your attention and sell you all of the things that they have. I mean, think about it. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to go into that. The Apple Vision Pro. This is a whatever mixed reality device, right? $3,500, right? $3,500. A similar device, sure, is not Apple, but it's similar concept. Meta Quest 3. Mixed reality VR headset. Sure, they're a little bit different. They're not going to be doing the same things, but as, pe as things evolve, you know, that's what it is. $500. If you really want something in the, you know, whatever virtual reality you want to be engaged in that, right? You're talking about a difference of $3,000 just because it has the Apple name. Something is wrong with that, right? Something is not adding up. But people go and buy the iPhone you know, at a thousand dollars instead of buying the regular smartphone, let's just talk about smartphones for 200, $300. And then they, and then they say, why would I buy the light phone for $300? I'm like, because my attention to me is precious. That's why I buy a dumb phone, right? I don't want to be tethered all the time. I want to move offline little bit by little bit without having a lot of all the friction stuff. And that is what, you know, a lot of people don't understand. So sorry for the rant. Just wanted to kind of put my thoughts out there when it comes to some of these things. We have five minutes left. Um, I'll try to answer as many questions as I can in that. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone's different. Everybody needs a different solution. And we're just here to showcase the best that we can on these matters. And I really hope that I'm bringing value to you and to your life. And honestly, this is the funniest thing about my channel. A lot of people come to my channel. They find what they need and they never come back. Like until they need something else, something different. And I love that because I'm not trying to add to the problem. I'm just trying to showcase what's available so you can make a decision. And eventually 
you don't have to watch my videos anymore until it's time to replace that phone five years later. And I'm okay with that. Sure. It's not, I'm not feeding the algorithm. I'm not doing all these things to, you know, become a billionaire. No, I just want a simple life and I want to help people. And that's why I'm here. Okay. All right. Rant over. Uh, final Q and a session at one it It'll be short because, <clears throat> um, because I got to go to continue with my day and you also do too. Um, Final Q and A. Okay. All right. So anyone know if I can use a 902, 903KC in Australia? Um, you should be able to use the GPS on these. The problem is I have a 902 and 903KC here. Uh, hopefully it turns on for your benefit. Uh, the problem with this device is that the GPS module is quite small and it's not going to be super reliable. Plus, you don't have a touch screen, so you're not going to be able to use it reliably or easily uh, in those terms. So again, it's it's a little bit of a bummer, but it's just what it is. I don't necessarily think that you should rely on it. I, I would rather just buy a regular GPS instead um, of um, buying a device like this one and trying to use it in, in, in that sense. Um, if it turns on, I'll, I can show you. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, I forgot the passcode for this. Uh, give me one second. <clears throat> oh my gosh, is it this? So, okay, it was. Oh, phew. <laughs> I need to reset that. <laughs> so eventually, I'm gonna give away this device. But as you see right here, you have the ability to uh, use the different apps. Um, and you can install mapping applications, but it's not going to be super reliable and it's not going to be like, you know, moving with you and all of that. So I'll just rather buy a, um, just a, a GPS unit from like Garmin or TomTom Tom or whatever is available in your area. Just my personal uh, recommendation. Uh, Chris um, says, is there a room in the market for another dumb phone feature device? If so, what would be your perfect device? What hardware, what applications, etc.? Honestly, um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Ooh. Something fell. Something like the Light Phone 2 with USB C and better like app support, like um in the sense of like um like some of the, the things that are part of the modern world, like two factor authentication, directions. This one has directions, so that's good. Uh, music. Uh, I don't care about Spotify. I really don't get it. If somebody could please put, please explain in the comments um, uh, why people are addicted to Spotify or send me a link to understand that, please let me know. I really don't get it. Like I don't get what is so special about Spotify um, when you can just listen to music online with other platforms or literally for free, like, you know, or you can buy it. I don't know. So music, just regular podcast podcast is kind of like for me podcast that that is necessary um because i listen to a lot and I, I get a lot of value from it um so i would say music maps music podcast maps two-factor authentication a camera would be nice calendar phone messages alarm that's it honestly that's all i need I, I know a lot of you say like you need NFC payments, but I don't, I really don't. Oh, a ticket viewer. Yes. Just because there's a lot of ticket online tickets and stuff like that. Um, I mean, there's ways around it, but if I had a device and it was perfect, that'll be it. And that's why I'm really excited about pairing the light phone two with the rabbit R one. Cause I'm going to have the best of both worlds. Hopefully. Um, uh, yeah, NFC payments is another one that I don't understand. I really don't get it. Like tap to pay. It's just, I mean, I just bring my card. Some people, I guess, prefer, but I mean, I'm, I'm okay without it. So, yeah. A couple comments. Um, let's say uh, bought the Tick Q3 flip phone a month ago. On the topic of smart features, is difficult on the bar on the bar with the Cat 22. So, so basically, a flip phone, flip smartphone with a keyboard. Now, no, there's a lot of uh, criticism against these smart dumb phones because they will suck you in again. But I wouldn't say that's the case. Good, uh, Ian. I think you're you're kind of showing us like, hey. 
<laughs> you know, when you have a larger screen, you have more uh, things for distraction. The small screen makes it cumbersome to use of so saying that getting a smartphone phone is a bad idea. In my opinion, is totally wrong. There you go. Good opinion. I agree with your opinion. You know, um, um, yeah. Um, oh, one more thing. Somebody just said it, actually, Valentina. Some sort of um, encrypted communication, WhatsApp or Signal or something like that, you know, that you can kind of like relay communication. RCS. Honestly, if the light phone had RCS, I would be glad. Like, that would be amazing. I would be happy with that. Just because of like, you know, sending messages and stuff like that. And, you know, like, uh, that's kind of important. Um, so, yeah, just, just, just that. Um, okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Um, more questions. Warrior of Christ says, have you looked at minimal phone? Yes, we talked about it and the new phones are coming out. I gave my opinion about it. So you can go watch in the back. Sorry. Um, we don't have much time to go over this. Um, for me, the best is a flip phone. Okay. Milan says, speaking of physical keywords, what are your thoughts on the click their comeback the clicks oh yes um one more thing to showcase um uh, this i thought that this was interesting clicks um uh, for iphone a little bit um i don't know it's the problem is the light phone that the i that it's for iphone in my opinion um as in like not that it's for iphone but the problem is that it's for like ginormous devices that this thing makes it even more ginormous so like that i think was my kind of like eh, you know not super happy about that so like um this is the clicks device it's essentially a device that has a qwerty keyboard for your iphone and it connects via bluetooth other people have tried to do this before I think there was a case called a typo case. I did have it, so I know I, I um, typo case, QWERTY keyboard probably, QWERTY. Yep, there it is. I did have this case and it was okay, uh, but they got sued by BlackBerry because the design was like essentially a um, BlackBerry classic, very similar. So they were like sued for that. So this one is, completely different because it has round buttons as you see um and it has like magsafe or maybe something i don't know it has a back maybe it's magnetic for wireless charging or something like that but i think it's cool but honestly here's the thing this is i mean the iphone 4, 15 pro is massive and now you're adding something that makes it even larger i'm like it's kind of bad you know in my opinion um but uh, i mean uh, yeah, I think it's cool for those that want a QWERTY keyboard and you want a smartphone, you can configure your, um, you know, as I talked about, I wrote this piece on the Substack. Um, you can do, for example, the Apple configurator method. So go to Apple configurator, you reduce everything on your phone, and then boom, after that, you have the ability to have a dumbed down iPhone with a QWERTY keyboard. I mean, that sounds like the dream to me. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, more comments. If it isn't pretty pressure, just having the possibility to open and install an app with Immaculate East. Someone, pe some people can live around. Yeah, it's true. Very true. Um, yeah. Uh, this is a good comment, actually, Milan, for physical keyboards. Physical keyboards that take 50% of the device real estate should drastically discourage mindless scrolling. Absolutely. The problem with the clicks is that it doesn't take any of the real estate of the phone. So it leaves like all of the screen plus the keyboard. So it's kind of like, oh man, that's rough, you know, in, in my personal opinion. Okay. All right. Let's see. Final questions. Um, let's see. NFC don't require a pin code. Okay. I don't know where you are, Hortex, but I never, I haven't used a pin code in a long time. Um, and this is maybe a conversation for outside of this channel because, um, you know, credit cards versus debit cards and like, you know, all of that and finances and how you handle them and that kind of stuff. But if I can recommend for anyone in the United States, outside of the United States, um, when it comes to finances, the thing that has changed a lot of my views is like, um, like the financial independence movement. I know there's a lot of like, you know, gurus and that, all that kind of stuff. But like, honestly, I've been getting a lot of value from understanding my finances, taking ownership of them and like um, 
understanding like how to spend less and, and, and make more, you know, like uh, make more of the money that I actually have. You know, I'm, I don't get paid tons of money. So like I just, you know, at my job, we, we have salary and, you know, some benefits, but I'm, I'm a middle class person. And um, yeah, it, it's kind of like a thing. Um, but yeah, maybe outside of the United States, you know, you have, um, you know, uh, more, well, I, I know actually in Europe it's like more cash based even like, you know, or, or, or debit based, um, because credit cards are, um, different, like, you know, they kind of have different connotations and like, you know, different things. They don't have a lot of benefits. Um, but here in the U S like, you know, if you're a responsible credit card user, you get way more benefits than using debit. Um, I think the, ratio is like for every debit transaction you're giving away 20 cents to the credit card users um if if they use it responsibly of course if you don't use credit cards responsibly you're going to be in debt forever i used to be in debt i talk about it in my book actually um and that was one of the things that allowed me to take ownership of my life but um yeah i mean it's quite oof, that's that's another topic for another day you know finances and stuff like that um but it's quite quite important um okay spotify is cheap but artists are still getting paid. That's pretty much everything. And also learns and serves you of stuff I've never heard of that I often really like. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, I don't know about cheap. That's 10 bucks, you know, like, I mean, um, but I mean, I get it. If you are always wanting to listen to new music, I, I get that. I understand that. I, I mean, I, I get the, I get the, you know, point, right? I get the point. Uh, other people are saying WhatsApp, Telegram, you know, for their perfect dumb phone and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So uh, last thing, comment from Chris. It says uh, RCS messaging couldn't come soon enough. I feel WhatsApp is right about to become a real source of distraction. They have to monetize it at our expense. Introduction of channels. I haven't heard much. I don't use WhatsApp uh, as, as much anymore. Um, yeah. Yeah, so like I use um just like the web version, so it doesn't have a lot of the distractions and stuff like that. But all right, cool. Um, oh, this is one good thing to end end it with. Um, yes, this happens a lot, and Ian just showcased something that happens a lot to people. Uh, let me put this in the final Q and A conclusion at two o five plus laptop tricks. So um, I personally think that a lot of people that get into a dumb phone, uh, Ian said it, you know, he's like, has been using a, a dumb phone for seven months, which has allowed him to use his um, laptop more. You, I think, could benefit from cold turkey. Cold turkey app. Get coldturkey.com. Um, this software essentially schedules everything to be blocked. I personally use it because I think it's very helpful. It essentially allows you to a dose of discipline built in, right? So it's like, Hey, it blocks you from doing these things. You put it out there. Uh, it's a one-time investment as always. I don't like, um, subscriptions. So maybe that's why I don't have Spotify, <laughs> you know, cause I like to own the things that I, I, I get pay one own forever. And, um, it's a good product. You can try it for free too. Uh, you can block websites, time blocks. You can even have a thing called frozen turkey. And this thing is crazy. Like it's it's literally, you can block the entire internet. Um, this website is blocked. Um, you can block applications, you know, from like the folders in your computers. You can block your entire computer with this thing called frozen turkey. Um, and you can use it to lock, log off or shut down your computer. This is your mix to schedule time away from your workstation. So. I personally think that this is, is something kind of like <clears throat> in conjunction, right? So you um, you uh, work in conjunction your your own personal discipline with this thing. And then like you put it on frozen turkey and you cannot get in again for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. You know, it has statistics and data and that kind of stuff. So it's really helpful. Another thing that can help you with your computer use is uh, getting next DNS. So in next DNS, um, you can essentially configure everything that you want. You can block ads, um, you can protect uh, parental control, privacy, you know, um, websites that you may not want to visit, or you want your children to visit It's essentially supported on everything. Um, you can allow and deny, and you can create uh, schedules for it too. 
And because this is in the background, you know, you can hard code it into your computer. Uh, and in order to take it away, you really have to go and edit it. And that's kind of like, oh, well, you know, it's not just like a click, right? Um, so th these two things, uh, uh, get cold turkey and uh, um, next DNS, you you make it and then you're like, hey, I cannot watch this. I cannot do this. I cannot get into Instagram. Uh, and you make it in a specific block. And honestly, I think it will help you. Of course, it's not going to be the magic solution that everybody wants, but it's going to be uh, definitely helpful. And one last thing, if you want to reduce your usage and you have disposable, this is definitely a lot of disposable income if you're really interested in it. Uh, the ThinkBook Plus Gen 4. Uh, this one, it's kind of like a rotating screen. I guess it's out of stock right now. It's about $1,500. It's quite expensive, uh, but it does have an e-ink screen. Uh, and there are some reviews out there uh, that you can use the e-ink screen on the other side. And honestly, it's not a bad computer. Um, I'm cur currently testing it and I will share my thoughts. It's not perfect, but using the e-ink screen, again, it's boring and you're not going to be um, using it a ton. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, everyone. Hope you're having a great new year. And I will see you next month on the live stream. And I will post a couple of extra things here and there on the channel um you will notice that i'm trying to uh you know still be there and still get some content out there but it's definitely way less because we're getting into a season where there's like more stability on the downfall market not a lot of new products but more kind of like just re-releases and that kind of stuff but i'm always covering everything oh one last thing um, there will be a giveaway. Probably I'll release it in the next video. I have a lot of phones that I just don't use anymore uh, that I have reviewed. And as always, I review, I purchase them, I review them, you know, to add the value to you guys. But then I give them away because I want somebody else to benefit out of it. So stay tuned. I will be um, uh, doing that giveaway pretty soon. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or anything as always in the channel. And I'll be interacting with you guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.